With YouTube attacking alternative media, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon for just a dollar per month. Link below. Logan, a movie that I personally feel was uh, left out of the award season in, in any real significant way outside of the best adapted screenplay, which is a big accomplishment in its own right. And I don't want to discredit from that. But personally, when I look at movies from 2017, Logan is like my top. It's just... Uh, an excellent send off to Wolverine, an excellently done movie. Patrick Stewart is at the top of his game acting wise. And you get to the end and you're just like, oh, 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 no. Right. It's good. I saw it twice opening week in the theaters. Freaking loved it. But I, I have to disagree with James Mangold right here when it says that he really, really hates post credit scenes. So he <laughs> says, ever since Nick Fury showed up to recruit Tony Stark uh, for the Avengers initiative at the end of Iron Man, blockbuster films have often implored audiences to stay through the film's credits for an extra scene. But yet, even after 10 years of Marvel movies, people still get up to walk out. It's like, did you, do you not do you not know why like 90% of the audience is sitting here? Do you do you not you not understand? No, no, yeah, there you go. Um, I almost want to put a sign on the door when I go see these movies saying stay through the credits, but, uh, it's created fun speculation for Marvel cinematic universe or DC extended universe movies, but the trend seems to annoy some big industry names. In fact, during the 2018 writer guilds association beyond words panel presented by Audi in Los Angeles last night, that was a freaking mouthful. Logan's James Mangold went off on post credit sequences, even referred to them as embarrassing aspects of modern filmmaking. Uh, discussing the type of movies he does and does not want to write, he says, The idea of making a movie uh, that would fucking embarrass me. That part of the anesthetizing of this country or the world. That's further confirming what they already know and tying in with other fucking products and selling them the next movie while you're making this movie. All kinds of this shit are all kinds of... And kind of all that shit that I find really fucking embarrassing, like that audiences are actually asking for scenes and end credits when those scenes were first developed for movies that suck. So they put something extra in that would pick up the scores when the movie couldn't end right on it or couldn't end right on its own fucking feet. A little bit, um, you know, it's just your James Mangold doesn't really mince words. And uh, that I, I would say that's pretty, pretty, pretty fair to say right here. But at the same time, putting in an end credit sequence on uh, on a movie like like a superhero movie makes sense because they're part of a larger universe, right? Like X Men One, Two, Three, uh, X Men Days of Future Past, X Men Apocalypse, uh, X Men First Class. Those are all essentially part of one shared continuous universe, even though there is a bunch of you know they go back in time and there's time jumps and things like that. But they're still part of it. Therefore, tying into the next thing is going to be something that keeps audiences excited for what's coming next. It's a tease of what they already know is coming. So you're not trying to pre-sell them on a product necessarily. They're already buying the product. You're just giving them a taste. It's like it's like when it comes to sex and you just play the game of, oh, oh, just the tip, right? You're just giving them a little bit to keep them excited for what's coming in like the next few months or the next year. It's, it's just a marketing tool is all it is. And it's something fun to speculate on to keep people talking about it. It's a good gimmick for these kind of films. I see where he's coming from and why he doesn't want to do it. But it's almost like he's trying to insult the audience over it. It's just a fun little thing. It's like, come on, James Mangold. Don't, you know, don't uh, don't be like that. Because you could also argue just I just want to say you could also argue. And this is probably studio mandated. But the Wolverine had a post credit sequence kind of or a mid credit sequence where Wolverine's at the airport, everything goes crazy. And there's uh, you know, Magneto and uh, professor X and all you see, all you hear is him saying, Logan, we need your help. And that was the end of that leading into days of future past, which uh, you know, was awesome. Right. So he's done one before, but it, again, studio mandated for a larger thing. We didn't hear him bitch about it five years ago when that movie came out. So it says he's not a fan of post credit scenes and seems to think that they're merely a way to look one step ahead and sell a franchise before audiences have even finished with the movie that they're watching. They used to be more prominent standalone films like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Airplane, but they've evolved to become stepping stones for more of a studio's content as well as a way to get audiences pumped for the next entry on a slate. Uh, now, in James Mangold's eyes, we have made audiences accustomed to post-credit scenes to the point of where they're merely expected before a film and debated upon the film's uh, head of the film's release, essentially cheating in the creation of hype. Uh, now, Mangold did address that by saying here, 
Now we've actually gotten audiences addicted to a fucking bonus in the credits. It's fucking embarrassing. It means you couldn't land your fucking movie is what it means. Even if you got 100,000 Twitter addicts who are gambling on what fucking scene is going to happen after the fucking credits, it's still cheating. It's just cheating, but there's all sorts of bad habits like this that fucking horrify me. Man, that have become de rigueur, whatever, in the way we make movies. And I think the fear of being one of them that did that that end, then someone's patting me on the back. And I feel like shit inside because I know I cheated. It's probably the greatest thing that scares the shit out of me. If the greatest thing for uh, that could scare the crap out of you in terms of... Of, of making a movie as a post credit scene, then you've done something wrong, ultimately, right? Like you've done something wrong as, as a filmmaker, if, if that's what's frightening you. The post credit tease in these franchises is just meant to set up the next film, right? Or to give a little snippet from the next film. Like looking at um, the, the post of, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, oh God, what came out before Captain America um, Civil War 2015? Was it, uh, was it Ant-Man was the last one? Right. And so at the end of that, when you had the end credit sequence of uh, Captain America and uh, and Falcon and there's Bucky Barnes and they got him kind of tied up. It's like, OK, well, we need some help. And he goes, oh, I know a guy. Yeah, it was it was Ant-Man. And so at that point, it's, it's using a line of dialogue that was kind of a key feature in Ant-Man in order to establish the connection uh, to Captain America Civil War and then bringing in, uh, you know, <laughs> to bring in Ant-Man. And, and so, yes, it's selling a future appearance of something that we've already known was going to happen. So it's just setting it up and establishing it. Now, if you look at something like, let's say, the end of Thor The Dark World, where at the, the post credit scene on that one is Lady Sif uh, and the other guy going to the collector's, you know, fortress uh, to give him the um, the ether. OK, from Thor 2, that would also be considered uh, a setup for what's to come, establishing this is where one of the Infinity Stones is going is going. And we're going to be meeting this character again in a few months in Guardians of the Galaxy. So th they've done it in multiple different ways where some things feel like they're one off. Look at the end of Thor Ragnarok. The, the post credit sequence there is is a little bit of an extra scene with uh, Jeff Goldblum. It's really funny. It has no real point to the overall movie, but it's just there to add something in. Whereas the one post credit scene or mid credit scene that's to tie into Avengers was in the, you know, right after uh, the, the first bit of end credits. So th there's all of these things. And ultimately, these are just tie ins. And I'm, I'm just kind of ranting now. I understand that. But Mangold, if he's having that big of a trouble with it, then he needs to uh, stop and, 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 you know, write better movies. But at this point, I think given his swan song with Logan, uh, I, I'm pretty certain he'll probably back off of working in the comic book realm for a while and go on to other things that won't need to have post credit sequences. And then he can feel better about himself and not feel like he cheated the audience, which just, you know, pro tip, y y you don't even if you add him in.